Okay, so uh, the other video or in class on Friday left off on uh, number three. I think we figured out the volume of that shape for number three, and so now we need to figure out uh, as well the surface area. And so we're going to break this down into two parts. We're going to find the surface area of the hemisphere on top. And we're going to add on to that the surface area of the cylinder. So since the surface area of a sphere is 4 pi r squared, that means that the surface area of a hemisphere would be half of that, or 2 pi r squared. And in this case, our radius of the hemisphere is 5. 5 squared is 25, and 25 times 2 gives us a surface area of 50 pi for the hemisphere. For the cylinder, our formula, we haven't done this for a while, but our formula for the surface area of a cylinder was uh, 2 pi r h, because what we're doing there is we're finding the circumference of the base and then multiplying it by the height. Because remember, when you unroll the side of the cylinder, you get a rectangle. So this would be the base of the rectangle, and this would be the height. So that's 2 pi r plus h. And then normally, we would add on to that 2 pi r squared, 1, for, uh, one pi r squared for the area of this circle right here, and 1 pi r squared for the area of that circle right there. However, in this case, this circular region right here is covered up by the hemisphere, so I don't need to include that. So instead of going 2 pi r squared, I'm going to go plus pi r squared. So 2 pi times the radius times the height, well the radius is still 5, so that's going to be 2 pi times 5 times the height of 8 plus pi r squared. 5 squared is 25, so that's going to give us 25 pi. 2 times 5 is 10, times 8 is 80, so that's 80 pi right there, plus another 25 pi for the circular base, makes a total of 105 pi for the surface area of this uh, cylinder. Um, so then if I add those together to get the total surface area of the whole shape, 50 pi plus 105 pi is 155 pi. And I believe in this case they want it to the nearest tenth, so that means I'm going to actually do this on a calculator and go 155 pi, which is 486.9 square centimeters for our final answer for the surface area of that shape. All right, now for number four. We have a funny looking thing going here. Um, and so we need to do two things. We need to find the uh, volume of this object and we need to find its surface area. So to find the volume of it, we're going to take the volume of the cube and we're going to add on to that the volume of the hemisphere. So the volume of the cube is easy. You just multiply the three dimensions of the cube. So you go 3 times 3 times 3 is 27 for this, and that would be cubic centimeters, because volume is always cubed. And then for the volume of the hemisphere, instead of going 4 thirds pi r cubed, you're going to go 2 thirds pi r cubed, because we only want a hemisphere. Um, now we've got some issues, though, because we need to figure out what the radius of this hemisphere is. So if I go up here and draw in a radius of that, and I hope you can see is that this radius right here is half is equal to half the length of the base. So that's going to be uh, 1.5 centimeters for the radius of the uh, hemisphere on top there. So that means to find that volume, I'm going to go 2 thirds pi times 1.5 cubed. And again, in this case, they want us to give them ans our answers to the nearest uh, tenth of a centimeter. So I'm just going to figure out what that is. So I'm going to go 2 times pi times 1.5 to the third power. And I'm going to take that answer and divide it by 3. And when I do that, I get only 7.1 
cubic centimeters for the volume of the hemisphere that's sitting on top of that cube. So all together, if I take the volume of the cube and add on to it the volume of the hemisphere, I will have a total volume of 34.1 cubic centimeters. Okay? Um, okay, now we also need to figure out the surface area. And this is going to get a little bit uh, crazy, I think. So if you're not completely understanding what's going on here, don't freak out because this is a little nuts. Um, so first of all, I'm going to find the surface area of the sides of this cube, not including the top where the hemisphere is sitting. And so there's going to be one, two, three, four, five sides of that cube that are exposed. Each one of them has dimensions 3 by 3. So 5 times 3 times 3 gives me a total surface area of the sides and the bottom to be 45 square centimeters. Now I need to add on to that the surface area of the hemisphere that's sitting on top. And just like in the last problem, the formula for the surface area of a sphere is 4 pi r squared. So a hemisphere is going to be 2 pi r squared. In this case, our radius is 1.5, so it's going to be 2 times pi times 1.5 squared. And again, since we want uh, to the nearest tenth, I'm going to go ahead and multiply that out, including the pi. And if I write that to the nearest tenth, I get 14.14 square centimeters for that. Okay? Then the fun part is that we need to also add on to that the surface area of these little spaces right here in between the circular base of the hemisphere and the uh, surface of the cube. And so I guess it's not really that crazy. The total area of that face of the cube is obviously 3 times 3 or 9 square centimeters. And then I need to subtract from that the area of the circle that's sitting on top. And that circle is going to have an uh, area of pi r squared, since it's a circle, or in this case 1.5 squared. And so really to find the area of these little individual shaded areas, shaded pieces, I have to go 9 minus uh, pi times 1.5 and so that is going to add on a measly 1.9 square centimeters to our total area. So this right here is the surface area of the five faces of the cube that are exposed. This right here is the surface area of the hemisphere sitting on top. And this right here is the area of the little spaces in between where the hemisphere sits and the uh, circular or I mean the cube. So now to find my total surface area, I add all of those up and get a final answer of 6.1 square centimeters. Okay, and so that has been about uh, long enough. So I'm going to stop this video right here and then uh, start a new one for problems 5, 6, and 7 if you need to see those.